Hey everybody, my name is Jared and I am a Master Mason in the state of Mississippi in the United States of America. And this is the Azul Paisley tie by Edgar Alejandro over at Masonic Revival. And it has got all sorts of symbolism just drawn into these little paisleys on, around, and in them. So check it out. Today's viewer's question is... What would happen to a mason if he ran into financial problems suddenly and was unable to pay his dues? Is there some form of counsel held, or is he considered an inactive mason? There's no two ways around it with this question. The answer is going to be completely different no matter where you live. You've got to reach out to your local lodge, start with your worshipful master, ask your secretary, and you can get all the details about what happens if. But I will tell you what happens if here in the state of Mississippi. So, by the book, what happens? Uh, dues are uh, required to be paid by December the 1st. Um, more practically, um, most lodges will adhere to the practice of you have to have your dues paid by the stated meeting in December or the first meeting uh, in December if you're going to have a called communication. So let's take this year for example. It's 2018 and in December my lodge is going to have its stated communication on December 4th. So my lodge will likely accept any dues that are paid on December 4th. Now that is dues that are paid down in the dining hall before the lodge ever really opens. Um, now when we get up at two lodge there is policy and protocol in place about when it comes time to elect members there's an opportunity given for anybody who hasn't paid their dues to pay their dues so you know that's a part of where this little gray area comes in. It, it says that dues have to be paid by December 1st but it also says that we have to give members an opportunity to pay their dues if they haven't before the voting occurs so you can't have it both ways so lodges are going to default to hey make sure you've paid before or at the state of communication in December uh, so let's say that that time comes and the members not even present yeah let's say he doesn't come to lodge very often or whatever the case is uh, and he just doesn't pay his dues uh, in Mississippi it's going to be a few months uh, before he is going to be suspended for not paying his dues in other jurisdictions that can go a whole lot longer than just a few months but here in Mississippi it's a few months later uh, you get suspended for not paying your dues which simply means that you cannot go and attend lodge uh, you cannot vote you cannot hold office uh, you can turn around and pay just the current year's dues and get reinstated but that is a whole another video let's try to stay on topic um, so what happens to this guy if he, if he still cannot pay? Well, if he's of a certain age in the state of Mississippi, he could apply for exemption. Uh, he may be eligible, meet the criteria to become exempt, and so he doesn't have to pay his dues. So uh, it would be beneficial for you to know about what kind of programs are in your area that um, might exempt you from having to pay your dues in the first place. All right, so let's say that's not the the problem, or that doesn't help. There's just no way he can he can pay his dues. Well, the the first and most critical thing here is communication. Uh, if this man doesn't doesn't show up to lodge, uh, and he's not there, or he won't answer the phone calls from the secretary, or he doesn't answer the letters that the secretary sends out. Um, then there's there's nothing we can do he's just going to be suspended when the allotted time comes around but if you will at least take the time to come to lodge answer the phone call respond to the letter and say hey guys look I really want to be an active part of lodge but I just got laid off two months ago I didn't see this coming so I didn't save up my dues ahead of time I can't pay my dues right now I could pay them in a month uh, I'll have them paid before the suspension times come comes around but I can't pay them before uh, it's time to vote for or have an election of officers whatever the case may be he may say look you know I, I was injured there's no way I'm gonna be able to pay my dues this year but I don't want to lose my membership in the lodge what can I do 
Well, uh, I think a lot of times, uh, though I certainly can't speak for everybody, you you could have a single member in the lodge step forward and say, hey, that's not just my brother, that's my good friend, I've known him for 30 years, or whatever the case may be, I got him, I'm going to take care of him this year. And so the dues are paid. Uh, you may have a situation where we quote unquote pass the hat. Uh, so somebody sends around a, a hat, a bucket, a box, whatever it is, uh, and collects money from everybody in the lodge. So rather than one person bearing the burden and paying for everything, uh, everybody in the lodge who is interested in doing so puts in a little bit towards it, and hopefully you can pay the guy's dues altogether. Uh, there are also uh, some quid pro quo options. Uh, so uh, I know that there have been situations in the past where uh, a lodge, rather than accepting money, will accept services. Uh, so for example, maybe somebody who comes and does the landscaping uh, for your lodge, uh, mows the yard, trims the bushes, uh, all that kind of good stuff, uh, and by doing the work of it, the lodge considers his dues paid and the lodge just eats whatever per capita is involved with paying to the Grand Lodge. So uh, I should clarify by saying that what I mean is rather than taking a portion of dues that are paid in and then taking a portion of that and paying it to the Grand Lodge as a per capita tax on an individual member, uh, the lodge would just say, hey, your work counts as your dues. We will take that per capita tax out of the operating budget of the lodge and pay the Grand Lodge. Don't worry about it. So rather than uh, the lodge making a little bit of money off of that, uh, that brother's membership, they actually lose the money, uh, but they probably gained many other benefits. So it's, it's a quid pro quo. You get and you give. Let's see, what else could be done? Well, it's possible that if, uh, again, it comes down to the communication, the brother has to go to the master of the lodge and say, hey, look, I ran down on this hardship. I know lodge um, dues are supposed to be paid this month, but hey, man, I've got an option. I can either put food on the table for my kids or I can pay my lodge dues, and you and I both know I have to feed my kids, plain and simple. Uh, but the lodge could sort of twist that around on you a little bit and say, hey, look, because you ran on this hardship, why don't you allow us to offer you some Masonic charity and let the lodge uh, give you this money to buy groceries or pay for this electrical bill or this telephone bill or whatever the case may be, and then you can use whatever money you were going to spend on that utility bill and uh, give it over for dues for the lodge. That way we took care of your material needs and you can keep up on your um, uh, your your obligations or your dues to the lodge. So there's there's other ways around it, I suppose. Uh, different ways of attacking it uh, is what I'm trying to suggest here. So I think that might cover all the different ways that something like that would could, could be covered. Uh, you did specifically ask if some form of council is held. Um, there's not. Uh, there's no council that gets together um, when elections come around uh, the secretary of the lodge will announce uh, the name of everybody who has not paid their dues um, and if anybody in the room has not paid their dues they're given an opportunity to pay it uh, if they don't want to pay their dues then they're allowed to stay in the room at this point but they're not allowed to be elected or vote in the election then the next time any sort of council is held so to speak is when uh, it comes time for suspension. The, the secretary will again read the names of who is going to be suspended for not paying their dues. Uh, sometimes you'll have a last ditch effort by a brother or group of brethren to get somebody's dues paid. Uh, other people are willing to let them just fall away since they clearly don't want to be a member or don't want to communicate what their needs actually are. So there's some different feelings about how best to address that situation. Now don't get stuck thinking that one way is right or the other because I can promise you that there are situations where either way can be right. There are situations where uh, when somebody's just right on the cusp and about to be suspended that that the brethren or a brother should jump in and pay that guy's dues and and keep him going because we know he's going to come back there is some situation that requires it 
but there are also plenty of times where somebody has simply decided that they don't want to be a Freemason anymore and no matter how much you love them as an individual person and still are their friend outside of Lodge or whatever the case may be, they just don't want to be involved anymore. And there's no sense wasting the resources of the Lodge to try to chase that guy down and drag him back to the water and force him to drink. It's just not going to happen. The Lodge is better off to say, hey, you know, if he doesn't want to be a member, then fine. He doesn't have to be a member. You're suspended, it's official and on the books, and we move on to the next thing. Uh, so, you know, don't think that either way is wrong. It, it really does have validity either way, and it's certainly a case-by-case -case situation. Okay, well, if you've got anything else you want to add to this discussion about how we take care of somebody who can't pay their dues or any other kind of interesting scenarios that might come into play with um, with paying dues or not being able to pay dues, then go ahead and leave those down in the comments below. Again, I know this is something that's going to be very different in almost every jurisdiction, so um, I apologize if it would require for you to write a book to explain the differences, but you know, generally speaking, what can we learn from your jurisdiction? And you never know. Uh, one thing I like about these videos is, you know, masonry has always evolved. And I don't care what lodge you're in, what jurisdiction you're in, and how ancient and honorable you think that your lodge and your jurisdiction is, something has changed over time. And it changes because of experience and influence. And I think that when we share stuff like this, who knows which one of us might take that piece of nugget and eventually get onto some sort of a committee or be elected or appointed to some sort of officer where we say, hey, you know what? I read about this idea one time. Here's how I think it could apply in our situation. Do you think we should give this a, a try? So leave the comments down below because you don't know who you might affect and what changes you might inspire in the future. Thank you all so much for taking the time to watch. We'll see you next time. Bye.